Look, thanks very much. Thanks very much for coming today. Um, just wanted to provide some information about um, some further um, excellent results that we've achieved for Operation Juliet Cheshire. Uh, this morning we've executed a number of search warrants um, on a further network involved in the distribution of significant amounts of dangerous drugs, in particular uh, methamphetamine and uh, MDMA. Uh, we've also um, successfully uh, uh, obtained the extradition of two key players from interstate drug networks um, who were distributing significant quantities of these drugs into the Queensland community. And um, overall, we've had some, some excellent uh, uh, seizures and results and uh, obviously um, the impact on the community will be um, significant, uh, particularly in terms of being able to remove significant amounts of um, uh, drugs such as uh, MDMA or ecstasy. Uh, we seized um, about a week, just over a week ago, we seized 4,000 pills from a, uh, a residence at Victoria Point, along with um, three kilograms of uh, the drug ice. Now, obviously, uh, the impact that that does have, particularly on our younger members of the community um, in areas like such as the, the nightclub scene and uh, certainly um, licensed premises, uh, that's a uh, significant positive for us. About $3.5 million worth of drugs. Could you just tell me about that, please? How much was it worth and um, that $1 million worth of drugs? Look, that's, that's very conservative um, in wholesale terms, in street terms. Uh, for instance, you know, an MDMA, MDMA tablets, if you were buying 4,000 pills, you may pay in the vicinity of about $9 a pill. Uh, if on the street, they can get as much as uh, $35 per pill. So certainly um, there is significant profit for these people that are uh, involved in this. And uh, that's an ongoing challenge for obviously law enforcement. But it's very pleasing to be able to remove those, those types of dangerous drugs and those amounts from the community, particularly with some of the drugs these days, we see uh, the ice we've been seizing, um, some of this stuff that's coming from interstate is very, very high quality in the vicinity of um, high 70s to high 80% purity. How many times have you actually been to the Look, um, uh, there's, a, there's a number of different methodologies and a lot of these networks use different methodologies all the time. Um, the uh, security at the airport is, is excellent and, uh, as you know, has been, been significantly in improved over a number of years. We work very closely with um, the Australian Federal Police, Customs uh, and the other authorities that, that work around uh, transportation, particularly the in, in air transportation. Um, the specific information this time was that fellow travelled by, by plane. We have that information that um, often these people fly down and, uh, and hire cars or use other methods to um, trucks, other methods to transport these drugs up. So it's, um, it's certainly dependent on the, on the people and the availability and, and often just the circumstances. And did he inspect this? Oh, look, um, I believe it was in his um, carry-on luggage. Um, I, I haven't got that specific information, but um, yeah, certainly um, it was very pleasing to, um, to intercept the, the kilogram that was on him and then we executed a search warrant on his residence and uh, there's a further two kilograms there and also the, the 4,000 pills. Look, this operation focused heavily around the nightclub scene in, in, in the Brisbane area, um, and uh, our objective obviously was to um, to disrupt those activities and, and, and target people involved in distribution um, in that nightclub scene, but certainly it moved further out to the higher level uh, um, networks and entities, and, um, and obviously the you know, the information we've got is a lot of these drugs found their way into those areas. And, um, Does the last person get off and just about four million instant targeting their belly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. No, it's, um, it's been an ongoing job. There'll be, there certainly will continue to investigate that. It's obviously, um, we have a, a lot of our young people go to those, those locations and um, we certainly work very hard to keep those, um, those types of venues uh, a safe environment for our, for our young people. Uh, we did identify that. We did identify some uh, some employees in, in the in, which is not uncommon um, in the industry um, in different uh, roles uh, employed by the actual clubs themselves. Um, security, among uh, security wasn't among those at this stage. It was more um, in um, employee roles in, either in management or in uh, you know service. There uh, there were obviously people involved in the um, 
uh, in the uh, entertainment areas there, the DJ, that sort of stuff. There was some significant information about that, and, and there were a couple of people identified during that. Could Did you remember those speakers saying you arrested DJs and managers at the time? Uh, there was, uh, yeah, well, some staff members were arrested. Um, something we did see was, was quite concerning. A lot of these people are very young, um, have very little criminal history previously, and um, are not adverse to taking significant risks and being involved in, in, in fairly high-level um, criminal offences. So they weren't that far removed from some of the uh, major parties? No, that's right. Yeah, like, um, you know, some of the people we're charging are 19, 20, early 20s, and uh, we're talking, um, you know, 20,000, 20,000, uh, oh, sorry, 20 grams of, uh, 20 ounces, sorry, of uh, ice, um, thousands of pills, um, you know, kilograms of, you know, one of the one of the persons we seized four kilograms of ice from was in his 20s. And those ounces, did they sell up to 12 grams? Yeah, oh, as a, as a wholesale, uh, yeah, an ounce of, ounce of ice can sell up to $12,000, even more sometimes, depending on the location and the availability. Uh, but when you break it down to, to street level, there's significant more profits there as well. And you're talking about Fortitude Valley and the Gold Coast, nightclubs and things? Particularly Fortitude Valley. Um, this operation focused on Fortitude Valley, not the, night, not, not the Gold Coast. Um, and uh, that was um, something that we... Um, we, we tried to maintain our focus on because uh, it's obviously uh, one of the major uh, entertainment venues for Brisbane and uh, we work very closely with the Metropolitan North region uh, and, and certainly um, a number of the, uh, the owners of clubs and, uh, and the people that are involved in the, um, the Valley Business District there um, have been very supportive. Look, uh, our operation uh, had a um, a covert side and an overt side. Um, so uh, a lot of the time, a lot of the, the, the presence of this operation has been running since September 2011. Uh, a lot of our operations continued along with um, without the notification of, you know, uh, the business people. But um, we certainly didn't have any resistance um, from any of those businesses there. No, no, they were raided this morning. Um, they were part of the syndicate that was involved with the intercept uh, from the gentleman that, that flew up from Sydney. Uh, they were part of that broader syndicate. In two different places, how many have you based? One fellow's based in, in Sydney and the other one is based in Melbourne. And they will take the carcasses in Queensland for shipping and then transfer to Queensland? They will be brought to Queensland today. They've been remanded in, uh, in our custody to appear in the uh, Brisbane Magistrates Court tomorrow in relation to trafficking charges. Significant, significant amounts. Look, um, it's obviously something we're continuing to follow our investigations. Um, you know, one of the, um, the pleasing things of this investigation is we have been able to move into the higher level, which is obviously one of our primary focuses. Um, so we have identified some, some key players with some very good links um, in organised crime networks. So it's something that um, has been quite pleasing with this operation, but it's something that we'll continue to work with. Have you identified those key organisations? Um, not at this stage. Very, very broad, if any. It's um, it was it's a um, with these nightclub scenes, it's it's very surprising the um, the types of people that uh, we found. As I said before, some of them haven't got as much as a traffic ticket. Are they related to any kind of like the public school people? Oh, look, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't personally delved into their education. Obviously, the, the police that that investigate them would be aware of the, their um, their antecedents, but I haven't personally delved into that. Uh, we're certainly not talking about. Um, uh, a focus on lower socio-economic um, parties, so they're from a, bro a broad range of areas. Yeah. Is there any evidence of over activity, violence, um, intimidation, or people inside the network? Look, we we didn't see any significant um, intelligence inferring that. Um, it's it's one of those, uh, I suppose, the nightclub scene, and that's one of those scenes where um, it's um, people. It's fairly incestuous. People seem to know a lot of people and. You know, we'll go down one path and then all of a sudden you'll see it connect back again. It's, um, there, it, there's a lot of tie-ins there with, with, with some of these people, even though they may live in totally different locations. Um, you know, uh, and, and as I said, we, we obviously sh we're obviously focused on the nightclub scene and moved back out to the higher level, which is obviously distributing the, the higher level uh, distributors, drug distributors that, that, that ultimately end up in these places. So that was our focus. Who made the arrest for the raids this morning? Were there drugs seized at all again or at some of them? Look, we're still getting the, uh, the results from those. Um, some of those searches are continuing and, and police are interviewing a number of people. There were drugs seized. I don't have the specific information at this stage. Um, 
I haven't been advised of any significant seizures at this point in time. The significant seizures in relation to that network were Tuesday week ago. Well, certainly there are a number of people we're still continuing to make inquiries about and uh, I, do, I do anticipate that our investigations will continue, um, but the, uh, the, the, the main operational focus of this, this operation has, has now closed. Yeah, off your ransom here, just how much money was value have you seized over time for the government? Look, um, certainly in the, in the vicinity of three and a half to four million dollars and that, that's, that's a wholesale figure, as I said. Uh, in terms of street value, significantly higher, you could triple that. Well, look, I'm not saying they're more educated, but I said there's a broad range of people. Um, obviously, uh, you know, entertainment precincts attract a, a variety of different people, um, particularly young people. And, um, you know, uh, it's, it's not uncommon. We have, we have uh, encountered some people in their, their 40s, 50s, uh, but there, are, there is a, uh, a fairly um, predominant focus on, on the people in their late teens, 20s. Look, look, we're seeing, um, we're seeing those, those um, traditional types of methodologies changing, evolving immensely. Um, it's, it wouldn't be uncommon to be able to go to a venue, not know that person at all, and be able to buy drugs. Um, and and they're a lot more... Oh, look, I think um, it's a probably a reflection on the, on the, um, the culture of, of society, the, particularly the young people. Um, they're, uh, they're certainly not risk adverse, um, and um, you know, uh, it's one of those one of those uh, environments. I suppose you meet literally hundreds of people on any given weekend, you know, or any given night you go in there. You can meet, and uh, I suppose it's a lot of it's about opportunities, and and that's what we're trying to um, disrupt those opportunities and those those avenues for these types of drugs to go into places where our vulnerable younger people are. Look, there, was, there certainly wasn't any significant intelligence about, you know, um, business proprietors and that. It was more people that were um, were involved in the service industry, um, supervised a couple of supervisors or managers, but particularly people that worked in those areas, uh, or new people that worked in those areas. Um, so, and and they they weren't a large percentage of of the operation, but it was obviously a concern to us as well. So, kind of, so I, I see that sessions are going for some time, haven't they? So September. Oh, street value, yeah. you know, street value would certainly, uh, would certainly blow out to um, to uh, those sorts of figures. Yeah, um, we when we seize, we seize an ounce, we value it at what the ounce the ounce is. But in in reality, when you're selling um, grams and those types of things, that, that you know you can pay six or eight hundred dollars for a gram of ice. Uh, so a whole lot less than if you say you could simply buy it from within. Yeah, the yeah, certainly. And, um, Uh, I, I actually don't have that specific information, um, but I mean, sometimes what we see with these people is they don't make a pre-booking or they don't have any preference. They'll arrive at an airport um, and they're just booked straight away. So there's no, it's very hard for law enforcement to monitor those sorts of things. So, and you know, there's the sorts, they're the sorts of challenges we have. And it may be that they walk in and there's a, a Tiger Airways uh, flight available right there and then. So it, it's, it's mainly about circumstances, opportunities. It's not vulnerabilities in any particular air airline yeah, or any but particular carrier. Oh look, um, they conceal they conceal these things in um, very um, uh, air type security uh, uh, air type devices um, on their bodies. Uh, lots of different methodologies. You know, obviously they learn from different you know law enforcement's detections and and methodology from where we uh, where we get results. They continue these people continue to learn those sorts of things. Yeah. Oh, you look, you know, uh, I think the, the buzzer picks up metal when you walk through. If it's got on, it doesn't actually physically electrocute a person. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and, you know, you can have something concealed inside something else. We see it all the time with the, you know, these, these infiltration shows. But 
Uh, they obviously continue to use strategies to, to elude detection, and we continue to work uh, closely with all the partner agencies to, um, to disrupt these activities and prosecute the people involved. Oh, no, no, not really. Um, I, you know, obviously, um, when they come from overseas, they've got to get here some way, whether it be a container or whether it be people... We get drug mules come in from overseas countries all the time. So, uh, as I said, we, we, um, we don't have a lot of these things where we intercept people off planes. Uh, a lot of people drive uh, up. Or they, some people use different transport industries. Um, some people use the mail. There's a variety of methodologies. So. No, it was, it was a, as a result of our investigations. We, we identified that. Well, the people in Melbourne are the, the key distributors. They're not the people that actually... The, the fellow who went down was the actual uh, distributor here in Queensland, and he was sourcing drugs from uh, the fellow in Sydney. Can I ask, any of the um, young, young business types here, what's your approach to them? Oh, I, I, honestly, I honestly couldn't say. I haven't delved into that thing. I, I would dare say that there probably would be some people that do, but I, I can't say for sure. Look, that's being analysed at the moment. Otherwise, I'd, I'd certainly have it here for a, a, a show and tell, um, and which we, which we, we try to do. But uh, um, because of the, the, the time lapse between the seizure last week and the time we were in a position to, to, to focus on our warrants for the other parts of the network, we weren't able to have it here. It's being analysed currently as we speak. But that is a concerning fact. We, we've, um, we've seen uh, very low levels of ecstasy in, in Australia and Queensland. And um, the problem with that is Often the drugs are substituted with other very harmful substances, um, different types of analog drugs, um, poisons, other chemicals, and and you know these young people, that's what they really need to understand. They're taking a significant risk ingesting something they really don't know what it is and what what it's going to do to them. Oh look, the, um, the the operation focused on the entertainment precinct, not on specific nightclubs. Um, often depending on, you know, there's a lot of these people that are involved move, as you know, from venue to venue. Um, so um, we certainly looked at, um, uh, at the whole, whole picture of, uh, of the um, entertainment precinct. And again, keep them moving from venue to venue and gathering the anonymous spots. Often they, well, they sell the people they know, but they, they also sell the people that they meet on the night. Yeah. And, um, and that's not uncommon, yeah. Oh, look, as I said, a lot of the people we, we, we targeted or identified weren't employed in that industry. They were people that attended those areas, but there were some people that were involved in the industry, um, which obviously is disappointing uh, and concerning, but, I mean, um, that's, uh, that was just one part of our focus, yeah? Well, what I'm getting at is we want someone like you to focus this far better than the rest of the day, you know, making it smaller and harder, whereas they're actually having a conversation with someone that you know quite well. Yeah, through, I suppose, through word of mouth that, that people... Um, people uh, I suppose, ascertain information that they, this person may be able to provide something to them. That's usually, usually the way it happens, yeah. Is the payload operation scheme to actually do um, getting informants in, in Australia? Look, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to uh, elaborate on our, our methodologies or our strategies. Um, needless to say, um, that we were very, very happy with um, the outcomes that were achieved. And uh, in terms of seizures, to be able to seize, see, uh, have a number of networks where we've seized kilograms of, of, these, of these drugs extremely pleased about that. How does it compare to other operations? Oh look, this operation I would say that is probably um, certainly one of the more significant operations that, that uh, the Queensland Police have been involved in and, and have run ourselves, been the lead on. Um, and certainly as I said, um, you know, uh, to be able to seize multiple kilograms of, of drugs from different networks and remove them from the community and the impact that will have, the positive impact that will have in relation to harm reduction, it, we're very, very pleased about that. Oh look, um, our counterparts down there obviously assisted us um, uh, in, in, in focusing on those people, and um, that's we have very good relationships with um, with both um, you know state and Commonwealth um, law enforcement agencies, and and, and that's you know that's very important. Is there any evidence? Sorry, you've got some video footage too. What are you going to see? You're going to see fairly significant quantities of um, of uh, methamphetamine, uh, both in white and. Um, and a brownish colour, and we're all go also going to see uh, 4,000 pills, um, ex purporting to be ecstasy pills, they haven't been analysed yet, but uh, in a blue colour there. Nothing on the arrest of the 
No, not the Chinese girl. Sorry? Yeah, yeah.